Howdy folks and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another episode of House of Iron 4 with the, let's say, uh, Germany 1945, April 1945 and SIG mod, also known as the Battle of the Silo Heights. So at the end of the last episode I, I think I pulled off the impossible, which was to rescue the, what I called the 5th Panzer Army trapped in the uh, Ruhr pocket and then uh, on my turn, um, trap uh, as many U.S. divisions as possible uh, in the Ruhr. And this allowed me to kind of consolidate my uh, front line and uh, gain an overwhelming, well, kind of overwhelming numerical superiority on the Western Front. And just as I said in the, in the last episode that the AI would never launch any amphibious invasion, holy moly cow, the, at the beginning of, the, of this episode when I was uh, recording everything, I was simply overwhelmed by the amount of amphibious uh, operations, amphibious invasions that the um, Allied AI launched against my lines. Um, in northern Germany, in the Netherlands, in Italy, and uh, later on again in, in France and again in, in Italy, I just could not manage all these amphibious landings. And at the beginning, I couldn't understand why was the AI sacrificing so many men um, along the, let's say, coastline uh, in, in launching all these amphibious invasions. And uh, later on, I realized that this could have been due to the, to the, to the fact that uh, on the French territory, there, there were just French divisions, while in the British and American-controlled part of Italy, there were mostly uh, American and British divisions. So maybe the AI cannot really, let's say, send allied units, um, so let's say, units over uh, an allied territory. Uh, one thing that did really scare me was the Allied landing in Trieste, uh, which nearly cut off the entire Croatian army. And um, yeah, I, this really caught me with my pants down. Uh, because I didn't know how to react to this landing, I uh, launched, let's say, the uh, 1941 2.0 Grand Offensive uh, with the, the entire, uh, let's say, Army Group B, uh, which, you know, by just sheer numbers, overwhelmed the French defenders and, um, yeah, forced France to capitulate for the second time, uh, this time in um, autumn of, of 1945. Uh, and then came the, uh, the the turn of the Italian front. I Because I was panicking in, uh, uh, let's say, reacting slowly, to the uh, Trieste, Trieste landing operation, uh, I kind of evacuated most of my troops from uh, Croatia. And when, let's say, I was feeling confident that nothing could have stopped my, let's say, liberation of the Italian territories, um, Italy once again uh, capitulated for the second time. And this was, let's say, very um, unfortunate because I realized that the competition of Italy completely cut off from uh, all supply lines um, a big chunk of my troops. I think I think they were the the tenth, uh, either the entire tenth or part of the tenth and part of the fourteenth um, armies. Um, but nevertheless, I still managed to to solve. The, um, the problems. What I really enjoyed about these um, kind of suicidal landing operations was that uh, the more they would uh, occur, the more um, Allied troops I would just um, wipe out from the Allied uh, mortar of battle. My, my, my plan was to wait until I produced um, as much equipment as I needed at least to refill the majority of the divisions on the Western Front before launching my grand scale offensive, but the collapse of the uh, Trieste Front uh, forced me to uh, accelerate the, the process. And once again here you see um, the, the multitude of the um, Allied landings that really caught me once again unprepared and yeah with the Italian capitulation I once again panicked because I was like oh my god I have to rescue my my folks 
Uh, but yeah, in the end, I managed to do what I wanted to achieve. And with the, uh, let's say, endless collapse of the, um, uh, let's say, Atlantic front, of the French front and of the Italian front, I could finally uh, send my troops, well, a portion of my troops uh, on the uh, Eastern Front, where my uh, fellow generals Fegelein and Steiner uh, not only managed to uh, correct, let's say, the, the front line to push the Soviets back and across the Oder River, um, but also they launched again their own grand scale offensive on the Eastern Front. But yeah, more on, more of these towards the end um, of the video. Um, the campaign is not over yet, because um, after this there will be also the second uh, scenario. I think that will be the most challenging one. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't want to spoil anything so far. I just wanted to uh, thank you very much, folks, for uh, supporting uh, my, my channel. Uh, and thank you very much for your uh, yeah for your your views, likes, and comments. And uh, yeah, enough talking for, for me now. I'll leave you to the rest of the video. I hope you guys will enjoy it. And as always, stay care, stay safe, stay healthy. And uh, well, I'll see you all in the next episode. <laughs>